Most activities will be performed more successfully and with less fatigue when greater strength and endurance are present. Thomas DeLorme and Roswell Gallagher. Thomas DeLorme is kind of who we know as the, being the modern developer of the idea of, of the concept of progressive overload. And so the other day, I read this quote and I got to thinking like, how do we perform better? Like what makes me perform better in during each set in the gym? Especially if, you know, my goal is to build muscle and it's pretty much strictly aesthetics. So it got me to thinking about, you know, how important is our rest times for people? And, you know, what is the best way to go about it? And if you were to come up to me on the street and ask me and I didn't have any time to give any sort of nuance to anything, I would tell you two to four minutes. But like most things in fitness now, we know that it's not it's not quite that simple because one, it's completely context dependent in like, you know, for strength sports, I would tell you maybe even more on your big compound lifts. You know, for CrossFit, I would say actually one minute's probably good considering you need to get your cardiovascular system in just as good a shape. But for this video, we're really going to just focus on the, you know, we're trying to either build a physique, it's all for aesthetics, building muscle, bodybuilding, whatever, right? So, and still at that point, I would tell you, rest as long as you need to feel ready to go before your next set. And ultimately that is the answer, but I'm a nerd and I just like to know, you know, a little bit, you know, deeper as like really think about why, because the context brings all the puzzle pieces together and makes way more sense for me to make better educated training decisions. So this conversation starts with fatigue. So there's two types of fatigue. There's peripheral fatigue and then we have central nervous system fatigue or systemic fatigue. I will probably use those terms interchangeably. But peripheral fatigue, as people that are focused on our physique, or like bodybuilders, physique chasers, we're chasing this. So as you start a set, your body is trying to get from point A to point B with that weight as efficiently as possible. And as we start to get tired, we are going to require more muscle fibers to work in order to act against that force. So our brain sends signals to what's called motor units within our muscles to recruit those muscle fibers. And this is what causes mechanical tension, which has been hypothesized to have been to be the primary driver of hypertrophy. Now, there are other drivers, potential drivers of hypertrophy that haven't been like discredited yet necessarily, but they also haven't been supported super strongly. So just something to consider, I think overall, based on what we have now, mechanical tension is. All of that causes our muscles to produce as much force against the external weight as possible. And so, generally speaking, this is going to fall based on science anywhere between 30% of your one rep max to 85%. Me personally, I never go below 60% of my one rep max. I stay between there and 85 do that, and that's just because I still like to lift somewhat heavy relative to my strength level. And I'm sure a lot of you are the same way. Now, systemic fatigue is what we don't want. And this is where it's more than just your muscles limiting your performance. And typically, this is going to be like, you know, your cardio. So when you're breathing super heavy. And so typically, there's a couple ways you know that, you know, you need to rest more. Like you don't, you're not ready to go yet. One, you know, you're just breathing heavy. You're dogging. You're, <sighs> and just like, you need to chill. The second is, let's say you ended up starting a set and you notice a pretty drastic drop in the amount of reps performed. Now, if this is towards like, if you're doing like five sets of something, maybe I get it. But like if from set one to set two, my general rule of thumb is if I drop, like do less than three reps or do three reps or more less than what I previously did, then I know I had a pretty significant decline in performance and I probably need to chill out. So that systemic fatigue is what we are not wanting. So what does some of the science say about how long we should rest? Studies honestly show various times, but like a lot of different studies in this field, there are always going to be limitations and things that you have to consider. But a study done by Brad Schoenfeld and colleagues, and I think this was back in 2016, and I'm, there has definitely been more since then, 
but it showed that muscle thickness and strength were significantly greater in the group that had three plus minutes of rest in between all their exercises, as opposed to one minute of rest. And all of these people were uh, experienced, trained athletes that at least had over a year of training experience. So does this mean that one minute rest are completely detrimental? And I would say not exactly. This is where it's important to one, look at limitations of the studies and two, understand what exercises do and how they generate fatigue in your body. Like pay attention to that stuff because every person may react differently and it's important to understand how you specifically react. So one, like in the studies, they had mentioned that, you know, they had encouraged people to keep the exact same dietary habits and like lifestyle habits they had prior. But, you know, especially as you go to the gym, you want to make progress. Sometimes just being selective for a study like that, you might end up, you know, doing a little bit more to try to get a better result because you're also in front of an audience. So on some level, these athletes were probably trying to at least, you know, get approval or something from these scientists. Potentially, I don't know, but that is a possibility and you have to think these types of things through. So, you know, results could have been skewed that there could have just been more people doing that in the three plus minute group as opposed to the one plus. Second, like compound movements. This was done based um, with compound movements. And we know with bigger movements like squat, bench, deadlift, you probably do need to rest longer because the overall fatigue that happens from using all of your body is much greater than, say, a bicep curl where it's one joint. And generally speaking, I don't know if I've ever needed to take three minutes of rest for a bicep curl. Usually I'm more in the 90 second to two minute range. But I think, you know, if you're in that camp, like it's totally okay to be doing one minute rest times. And this goes back to like, hey, just go whenever you're ready. And if there's a significant drop in the amount of reps that you do, then you know you probably need to rest a little bit longer for that exercise. But that's going to be the best proxy. Because uh, there's, you know, you got to think like, and I think I heard uh, Mike Isertel use this analogy, like when you're in a car, you're not basing like whether you should get more gas or not off of how long you've been driving. There's a gas gauge, there's a fuel gauge. And the best gauge for our fatigue is, Hey, am I breathing hard right now? And do I feel okay and ready to go for this next set? Now it is also important to note in that study that Schoenfeld did the, um, there was a pretty significant decrease in reps done for the bicep curl. However, it's still not requiring the same systemic fatigue as say some of these compound movements, but also like you could always just do like a rest pause set or a drop set because at the end of the day, a lot of these studies show pretty much the same thing. As long as the workload is sufficient enough, is sufficient enough and it is progressing over time, you're still going to grow muscle. And I think it's important not to get super like into the, like optimize every little thing because I personally really like shorter rest on bicep curls. So rather than like taking a longer rest, I'll just add a drop set or I'll just add another set to that exercise since I'm still taking less time to do that than if I rested a full three minutes in between all of those sets. And Dr. Milo Wolf actually did a video on this recently where um, he went through a bunch of studies and basically when the overall workload is equated, similar results in hypertrophy were found. There could be more with three plus minutes, but it's, I don't think it's really worth arguing about at this point. Let's talk about time constraints. So a lot of people I know are kind of limited on the time that they can spend in the gym just to other obligations, or maybe you just work out at lunch um, or in the morning before work. And you know, you're pretty limited on time. In this case, I would just say do uh, antagonistic supersets, which this is basically, you can pair exercises together, but make sure that it is not a muscle that is affecting the one you're the one that you're working in the other set. So in this case, it'd be like, you know, you could do bench press and a barbell row, or you could even do like a leg press and a barbell row or dumbbell row or something, but you get the point. Don't do like tricep press downs. Don't, or don't do chest press superset with tricep press downs because now your tricep press downs are 
going to affect your bench press. And then it's just, it's like almost more fatigue in such a short amount of time, especially if your rest periods, if you're only going to keep them at like two minutes, that's still a ton of fatigue. And you may be better off just doing an antagonistic superset. And that's the only supersets that I ever do because I want to be able to put everything I can into the one set, into the muscle that I'm actually trying to develop. But other than that, those are the only types of supersets I do. So basically, you do those, you rest two minutes in between your sets, and then that can cut down your uh, workout time pretty drastically. But outside of those types of supersets, I personally don't really use a whole lot of drop sets, rest pauses, myo reps, and all that, just because like I'm fine resting and you know taking my two to four minutes. So with that being said, that's kind of the gist of everything. Just go whenever you feel like it. There might be some cases where maybe resting more is going to help you, like with compound movements and stuff. But overall, you are the best gauge for your own training. And I think you should just take with that what you will and do what you do. So with that being said, peace.